What's going on everyone? We are back and today we are talking about Ritual Farming. Now Ritual hasn't seen some love in a while and it is my favorite league mechanic so it hurts me every time a patch comes out and they change nothing for it. But they did make some changes, namely the one that they added omens to the rituals and some of the omens are worth quite a bit and they are pretty often, not to mention, they are pretty useful. This also pairs well with certain mechanics. Uh, just because of how it works and we will go into that so that is what we're talking about today so make sure you like and get subscribed and let's just jump into it now for the atlas tree you're going to see that i also went into harvest and delirium this is the strategy i am adding ritual to i will have the link for the video below about the harvest and delirium strategy but for this video i'm just going to be focusing on the ritual and what we added to it so after you watch this video you can go check out that one to see the other half of what I am currently doing as well as the atlas passive tree will be in the description for ritual it is on the left side of the passive tree if you click on the center thing you can see where all the nodes are for ritual you can see they're all on the left and you pretty much get everything except for two main nodes favors and ritual altars randomly costing 90 percent less than 80 percent more this is dumb do not take this and the uh immutable dogma where you cannot reroll favors this is even dumber uh, you want to be able to reroll as much as humanly possible. So the nodes we do take, we take Occult Devotion, which means you will always have four Ritual Altars. It is always between three and four. This forces it to have four. This is very, very important, as you will see in the strategy. Next is Answered Appeals. Uh, this just makes it so your deferrals appear sooner. We'll go over that. And that when you defer things, it costs less reduced tribute. This one allows you to reroll two additional times. Rerolling is the most powerful thing you can do in Ritual. Having two more rerolls incredibly important and also just when you reroll having it cost a little bit less is also a positive this one isn't 100 percent necessary it makes it so it's 15 percent chance for you to drop a blood filled vessel again we'll go over that in the video pretty soon and uh yeah it's not this one out of all the ones that i think are required this is probably on the lower half not super important but i would still take it since this makes the farming a little bit faster with the nodes before it not to mention you get a little bit more chance to contain rituals and you can see we take the extra chance to contain ritual nodes down here because we are not going to be using the map device to force it. We are going to just take our chances and force it ourselves. And the last thing I want to touch on is the ones that give the increased chance for rituals with special rewards. There will be special rituals that will have certain things like nothing but currency. This increases the chances for those type of rituals to appear. So that's why these are incredibly important as well. For Ritual, the map you run does not really matter too much. You want to run something that makes it so it's kind of linear, so you aren't skipping past any of the Rituals as you go or having to backtrack to find one. I am going to run Strand and Fields because that is the map I run for the other strategy. So if you're following the entire strategy, this one and the one in the previous strategy guide that I made, you are probably going to want to run Strand on your favorite maps with a couple of Fields so you can try and ping pong between fields and strand strand being ideal it's almost impossible to miss any content because it is basically just a straight line from beginning to the boss now you do not have to run any of the ritual scarabs for this strategy uh two of them are decent and one of them namely this one that unique monster slain grant 200 more tribute this is probably not necessary at all if you want to run a scarab i suggest the ritual scarab with selectiveness it gives you an additional reroll not to mention the first two times you reroll it's not going to cost you any tribute, so you have more tribute to spend on rewards. That one's good. This one's obviously pretty good. 100% increased favors, so uh, you know that can be good. It is about eight uh, chaos per. So I don't know the math on that. I don't know if it's worth it. To be honest, I haven't messed around with this too much. For eight chaos, though, it's in that range. You can mess around with it, see if you like it. But none of these are particularly necessary if you have the right atlas passives on your passive tree. So I'm just going to run this fields map try and make this relatively easy and when you go in the first thing you'll notice if you're running the other strategy is the delirium air uh, again follow that other video you hit delirium air i am going to skip it for this video for the sake of ease but as you're going through the map you will eventually see the ritual icon which is this one right here and you want to kill all of the enemies in the circle to save them in the ritual because what it's going to do is it's going to spawn those monsters again in the rituals so the more monsters you kill in the area are going to increase the amount of people in the ritual 
Again, this is a very incredibly glass cannon build, and I'm trying to focus and play with one hand at the same time. So, yeah, that's why I died. Now, each ritual is going to have a gimmick. They all share the same gimmick in the one map, but they are random. Whenever you start a map, it will randomize. You can hover over it. You can see this one has monsters take reduced damage, and fortress totems further reduce the damage that monsters take. So once you click on the ritual, it's going to start it. You can't move outside of the circle. You have to stay in. You kill all the monsters, and you'll see in the bottom center of the screen, it is counting up the tribute that you get for killing the monsters. Once you kill all of the monsters in the ritual, it will kind of pop. It'll drop some items in the center, like that. See, it drops a couple items, uh, dropping more as you go along, because as it saves the monsters killed in the ritual, every ritual you do will have more and more monsters in it. So the first ritual is going to give the least amount of tribute, and then the second one, third one, and fourth one. Again, we're forcing four with the Atlas Passive Node. We're going to give you increasing ritual. Now, it is pointless to check this after the first or second one, because as you can see, some of the hidden or the items are hidden. They're blocked out. After the first ritual, it will uncover some of them, about 33% of them. Second ritual, it will do another 33%. And with the third ritual, it will show you all of the items. So don't waste your time checking the ritual after the first one that you run. It is pointless. Just go on and move on to the next ritual. All right, so I did the fourth ritual. You can see four out of four. I got exactly 10,000 favor. So now that we've done all four, we can check the rewards. You can see I got a um, Conqueror map, which is nice. You can actually use your loot filter or item filter on this. That's why you see some of these are grayed out. So it will already tell you. You don't have to look at these. They aren't very good. But you can just kind of check the things that you want to buy. Now, what you can do, though, before you reroll is you can defer items. So I can buy this now for 2,000 tribute. Uh, I did get 10,000 uh, tribute, so um, I probably would just outright buy this for the sake of time. But to show you for the sake of this video, you can defer items at a deferral cost. You can see when I click defer item, it says the deferral fee is 27 tribute and the future discounts 200, the total deferral cost 227 tribute. So I can defer this so it guarantees it'll appear in a future ritual roll which is nice because you can defer a bunch of things and then once you get uh you know one of those ones where you used all of your rerolls to see everything and you have nothing left you can buy this for cheaper depending on how many times you deferred it so i can defer that because i want to see that in the future and i can use 1340 tribute to reroll you can see right here i have three left reroll i got some rogue markers some crappy uniques some chromatic orbs um, a jewel that's not really worth much. Uh, ritual splinters, we'll explain what those do in a minute. Uh, some scroll of wisdom, nothing crazy. Now, you can see this has a yellow border around it. That means it is safe for another couple rolls. When this border turns red, that means you either have to defer it again or buy it within the next roll or two, or it is going to disappear. Usually when something I want has a red border on it, I just automatically defer it just to be safe. But I'm going to reroll again. I have plenty of tribute. Get another pull in the slot machine there's some chaos i have plenty of tribute i'll just take some chaos ritual splinters you might want to take those i'll explain what those do in a second but for now my one map is still yellow so i do not need to defer it again so i'm going to reroll my last time amulet that is meh nothing crazy socket of quality gems nothing crazy there we are out of rerolls we have plenty of tribute so i am just going to take the map now so we got a conqueror's map and a couple chaos out of that, you can also, you know, buy some essences, uh, buy some ritual splinters, um, stuff like that. With the ritual splinters that you can buy, once you get a stack of 100, it will turn into something called a ritual vessel. What these do is you can use them on a completed ritual to save those monsters in that defeated ritual in the blood-filled vessel. It'll turn to a blood-filled vessel. So you always want to use it on the last ritual. This is the 4 out of 4 one. After I finished it, once I click in it, right click, click on the ritual, it is going to fill it with blood. And you can see it saves 61 monsters, monster level 83, from the fields in this blood filled ritual. What this is going to do is it acts like a scarab or something else you put in your map device with a map. And it is going to automatically add those 61 monsters to the rituals starting with the first one and onward. So you're going to get a whole lot more tribute from the monsters. Excuse me from the monsters that you kill so it's just going to give you a whole bunch more tribute now you cannot use a uh, a vessel a blood vessel on 
a ritual that was forced with a blood-filled vessel. So you cannot use these. Well, you can use these every run if you buy them, but if you're just farming them normally, you can only use them um, on ones that were not used. A blood-filled vessel was not used. That's why this is kind of nice. You have 15% chance to drop a blood-filled vessel on the final ritual altar, so you can save those up and get more of those. Also, another tip is sometimes the ritual will be in the boss room. If you kill the boss and then do the ritual, the boss will be in the ritual. And if you do that ritual first, say you ran all the way to the boss, checked if there was a ritual, there was one, killed him, he put him in the ritual, and then did the next three, he will be in each one giving increased tribute. So that is technically how to min-max your ritual and favor rewards and the amount of tribute that you get. But it is also comes at the cost of being slower because you're running to the boss and backtracking. A good map for this that is not in this league, unfortunately, is Mesa. You can run to the boss incredibly quickly, and he's in the dead center of the map. Uh, that map is not there. There are some other maps that you can do that you can get to the boss uh, easier and then run back and do the rituals. But I don't suggest that it is a little bit slower. I would just run them normally, especially if you're doing Delirium. Now, when the ritual is active and you are doing a ritual shrine, it pauses the Delirium. That's why Delirium is great with ritual. So while you're doing the delirium, it pauses the delirium fog so it is not catching up with you, and it pauses the timer. It's just really nice to uh, to a combo with that just simply for that fact. But that is basically how you farm ritual. Defer, 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 another strategy that some people like. I don't usually do, but it is an option. Is You get more 100% more tribute. But you cannot reroll. If you start getting, you know, 7, 8, 9 deferred items in your ritual, that are relatively expensive and they're just getting annoying and you're sick of seeing them and they're taking up your um, your reward screen. You can take this once or twice, run a couple maps, get a whole bunch of tribute, and just knock out and get some of the rewards out of the way. Uh, it is very nice for that. And then just unspec out of it when you are done with it. That is a strategy a lot of people use. I have done it a couple times. I usually don't do it, but it is a solid strategy that you can use. Also keep in mind that most items in the game can be found in a ritual. You can find stacks of divines. Uh, you will find a lot of chaos and stuff like that. You can find a mirror. You can find a mage blood. You can find a headhunter. All of that stuff can be in the ritual. You cannot find like boss drops, rewards. You aren't going to find a progenesis or anything like in there. But most of the stuff in the game is in here. But that's going to do it, guys. That is how you farm ritual. If you liked this video or if you really enjoy ritual, please hit that like button. It helps the video a ton. And make sure you're subscribed. Um, I'm doing a lot more farming and farming strategy videos lately. People seem to enjoy those more. It seems to be help, helping people a little bit more. Uh, and make sure you get followed over on twitch.tv slash safe on talk, where we are always, where I'm streaming all the time. A lot of these strategies, and you can ask any questions you want, or you can ask in the Discord. A lot of helpful people in there. Links to all of that in the description below. But thanks for watching, guys. Try Ritual. I love this mechanic. It's a lot of fun. It's like playing a slot machine at the casino, except it is no risk and you are not losing your money so give it a shot and thanks everyone for watching and we'll catch you on the next one